Broadcasting Network. We're on the first and third Friday of every month, 7 p.m. Pacific. Thank you for joining us and supporting us. Follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat. And of course, like our Facebook page on Facebook, Between the Sheets Podcast. We're also on YouTube, blah, 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 blah. You, you know the scroll. Don't forget, you can call in at 323 524 2599. 323 524 2599. We have a very special show tonight. Hey, Tony, I hear feedback somewhat. Um, we have a very special show tonight. Um, it's a little bit of the old guard and the new guard coming together. I'm so excited. Um, I will just uh, go around to the new guard and then I will punch to the old guard. Um, we have Jenny McNulty here. Um, Jenny, tell us what you do, where they can find you and sort of what's going on this week. Um, I took over Ben Carson's neurosurgery practice when he ran for president. Uh, no, I'm a comedian, and I host a talk show three days a week on my Facebook page, and I host a sports show. Very cool. Of course you do. Um, Cara Noble. Well, hello. Um, I didn't get up too much since I last spoke to you all because I had a bug. So I had a week of having a bug, a tummy bug. Um, but I am a voice artist. Hello, lovely ladies. I'm, I'm really excited about meeting you all. And then we have Cheryl Murphy, our in-house clairvoyant. Yes, hello everyone. Good evening. My name is Cheryl Murphy. I'm a medium and a psychic. I just did a wonderful podcast today, so I'm all jazzed. Uh, just good things happening right now. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you. And, and Tony's on the board. Christian is somewhere there. So thank you guys for taking care of us this evening and every night that we're on. Um, she has, as we all know, Durga McBroom. She <laughs> has a uh, second incarnation with me of the podcast, but she's been making appearances since she's been landlocked here in Los Angeles versus Rome. Um, so welcome, Durga. What have you been up to, my dear? Oh, uh, actually, I've been finishing up some, some sessions I got to record at uh, East West Studios the other day and got in trouble because I posted a picture because some a very major country star was in. And I was like, ooh, he's in the house today. And I posted it on, on my Facebook page. And the studio's like, you gotta take that down. So, uh, uh, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna say who it was, but his last name rhymes with Oakham. That's all I can say. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, and uh, I've been doing some recording at home and promoting my album with my sister too and shooting video. Nice. Well, and now we come to the time when I have to introduce these two women um, who um, I met, I guess, randomly online, had discussions with them on the phone and said, you guys have to be part of my podcast um, when I brought it back the second time. And um, it was lightning in a bottle. Um, and it's, um, and I miss those days. I love you ladies now, but it was really psycho back then um <laughs> and we had a bunch of sociopaths on so there we go um i will start with the first person that i brought on um and it's nicole jones and she will tell you a little bit about herself i know a lot of people who had listened to the podcast were really excited that this reunion show is happening so nicole it has been a very long time your kid's probably 20 something years old probably right now uh, <laughs> why don't you fill us up today because i know that you know you did the podcast and you had other things bubbling under and now you've got some amazing things on the on the plate so say hi and let us know what's going on well, thank you, Gayan, for inviting me back. And I apologize for my cat molesting me while we do this <laughs> podcast. But my cat needs me right now. But uh, yeah, no, Gayan, it was such a wonderful time being on this podcast. It was such a great opportunity. It's such a great time to just kind of get to know some wonderful women. And uh, right now, I guess what I would like to, to really talk about is the, the documentary that is now on pre-sales for iTunes. Durga helped me by just even watching it and giving me her input. Uh, it's called The Third Strike. It's about the unjust three strikes drug laws that exist in America, which is modern day slavery. It is literally the way that we put people in prison. And uh, and, and, and about this amazing attorney, her name's My Angel Cody, who is uh, like a modern day Harriet Tubman, who is literally freeing people from prison. So I'm very proud of the documentary. I would really hope that everybody will give me some pre-sales. If you have iTunes, 
look up the third strike because if you can do that for me, if you have any way of just pre-sailing, like, like ordering the film, it gets put on a landing page. It's been um, released by Gravitas Ventures and uh, it, it, it just everything we can do to promote it. It's about people who are literally sitting in prison right now for an unjust law. And that's what I've been doing. And I've spent three years doing it. So while I haven't been here with you ladies, I've been working my ass off trying to figure out a way to try to do something for this unjust system. <laughs> Well, I'm really glad that you picked a light topic. I, I really say, thank you. I, it's, thank you. So I also like cats. <laughs> it's really powerful, you guys. I really highly recommend you watch it. I'm really proud of you, Nicole. Well, you we're going to talk that. about. Thank we're going to talk about why. Think about because I'm going to ask you later once I introduce um, our favorite Canadian. Um, mm -hmm. How why you decided to choose this and and how we got there. Um, now from, you know, Nicole, we have Carla Collins. Carla Collins is a comedian, um, an actress, an author, um, Canadian. And I, I keep saying it because I love Canadians. I've always loved Canadians. And, and look at what a beautiful face she has. Who could you not love this Canadian? Um, she is now actually calling in from Canada. <laughs> so Ms. Collins. Ms. Collins, what has been going on with your life, my dear, since the last time we connected? I feel like everything I'm going to say after Nicole is going to sound as deep as a lunch tray, so I'm just going to be there. <laughs> I know. I see, Nicole's out there. I, Carla, I still have sex fantasies about you, so I don't have to do that. And that's why I am Nicole's husband and the father of her child. So that's cool. I've been up to that. Uh, the kid isn't 27 because we have our own kid. Okay. <laughs> Together. Who's so just a toddler. Um, I am. I know. I knew that Gam would love that I was in Canada. Uh, I've been up to a few things too. Um, I've launched two podcast web series uh, since I've been here. One, Carla Collins Rocks, R-O-X. The Elmo, the Elmo combo being something that I'm thinking Gan and Durga might know about. It's quite an iconic music venue here in Toronto. And the other one is the Doucheless Vegan because <laughs> it's the pandemic. That's right. And we actually just got a big kind of a, a radio deal today. So until it's in, that's wow. kind of cool. Like the podcast uh, portion of um, a big conglomerate of radio stations. But and I came up here to do in the brief window, things were open. I recorded another comedy album that I think we're going to call Pandemic, I don't know, or, you know, double <laughs> demasking something. Um, and, and then I've just stayed here. I'm living on a beautiful horse farm in between like North of Toronto for, cause you're not going to know the other places. And with my bestie, who I call my gay fiance, greatest relationship ever. And, uh, yeah, since the pandemic, I've become a cat person. You know, I've got my, I've got three kittens in the room right now that I'm harboring like fugitives. I've gotten tattoos. I'm a vegan. So you know what's next, Gay Ann? A little bit. <laughs> I was just going to say, are you driving a Subaru? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to maybe learn how to play the acoustic guitar, ladies. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> hey, look, I mean, the second incarnation of the show, is everyone was, you know, straight adjacent. And I was, you know, blatant lesbian. And it's good to know that You've gotten your roots and now you guys are expanding. So it's wonderful. Carla, you are right there from being a card carrying lesbian. <laughs> you know what I say? My perfect woman at this stage is the little mermaid because I only like lady stuff from the waist up. <laughs> With a breast play and making out. So I'll let you know if I move on to any other Disney princesses. That's you what I'll what? call. I'm going to tell you something when you're ready. I am there. I, you know, you have. <laughs> You know, you're married to Nicole. I could be the mistress. I really don't want a lot of connections. I love women long... now. Hold on. Hold on. I... Well, no, you just calm down. I like long distances. I love Canadians. I absolutely do. And, you know, I've always wanted dual citizenship. So, you know, you are my full wet dream. Okay. Damn. I'm sorry. That's my bit. You know that's not I know. Bitch. You know what, bitch? You, going, you know what? There. You go to you go back to fucking Rome and leave Carla to me, okay? Yeah. No, I no, just no, love no, how no, much no, you no, ladies no. love pussy. Carla, what do you have against me? I got you know, well, no, 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 Oh, by the way, did I tell you that this old group, we don't let anyone have a fucking word in edgewise. But Jenny, you were gonna say something. I said, 
What do you have, Carla? What do you have against feet? <laughs> I love feet. Are you kidding me? I have, and I have also. I'm, I'm thinking of becoming a foot model. I'll be honest with you, Jenny. I'm really exploring some of my options right now. So you're just working your way up to gay then, from Carla from the used top to be a to model the bottom and the everything. bottom to the top. Carla could be a model for everything. Carla just is the bomb all the way around. I want her to model everything. I, I don't want. Tell I don't want to hey, hey, stop. Wait, wait. You can make money women. doing this. Hold I on. just was watching this last night from. My new favorite like junkie TV show is is 90 Day Fiance because it's like <laughs> so bad. You got to I I'm like <gasps> watching all the time. So yeah, it's a the guilty pleasure. It, and I'm going to tell you something, Carla, obsessed with Criminal Minds. Obsessed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. The TV show? The TV show oh, or right? like yes. really well, no, criminal no, minds. I would have to be a little fucked up to be as obsessed as Carla is with Criminal Minds. No, wait, wait a minute. I look at, wait a minute. I, the total ghoul ladies, like I Criminal Minds, the Real Crime Podcast, Mine Hunter, both seasons I went to town. I would let Keith Morrison do unspeakable things to me. It would just be like <laughs> Carla didn't know she wanted a pearl necklace, or did she? I just, <laughs> I'm very creepy. I'm very creepy. Now, Nicole, wait a minute. Last night I was watching the spinoff from 90 Day. And there's this chick on it who's just like horrible, like you know? that horrible blonde chick. And she's like, oh yeah, this new thing. Guys are like giving me money to like show my feet. And I'm a foot model. And like they, this guy, like here's a text message. And he's like, I would love a picture of your feet doing this, that, the other. And she's like, how much? He's like $30. She's like, done. And then she gets on the camera. I kid you not. The woman stands up, points the camera down and steps in a container of jello. Okay, she's like, you get more money if you like squish things and step on things. And so she's got her manicure <laughs> yeah. nose going oh up and down in a pan full of green jello. People Whoa. pay money for I this. Know. They pay and money I, to watch people eat on YouTube. People yeah, are making yeah, a killing. What's it called? Majungu or whatever the hell. I need to do that. <laughs> but oh my God. Right. What has COVID done? Reduced us to watching Drek on television. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good it's so good it's like junk food television i can't I got, it's I a can't guilty pleasure it. yeah you can't talk about toes and jello and then call it junk food television <laughs> i am not guilty bitches i am not guilty i am among many millions of people who cannot tear themselves away from the you know the premise is someone from another country and an american come together and they're trying to apply for the K-1 visa, which is when you get uh, engaged. And the and then once they get here, they have 90 days and then they have to get married and hijinks ensue. You know what? <laughs> you were Why guilty. Are you I'm you were guilty. Why are we promoting this shit? I would like to turn it around for a moment and talk to Nicole. <laughs> 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 and say to Nicole, how, my dear? Now, how did you, how did you start, um, like, how, like, you know, how did you think of this is what you wanted to um, do your movie on? It started because um, I had a person that I knew who was a, um, he is a public defender. Uh, it's a long story, but um, bottom line is, is I became very interested in the criminal justice system because it is so systemically rooted in racism and everything that is just modern day slavery and i wanted to see if i could make a film that showed something that i had an intrite into because uh the attorney my angel cody who if you look her up uh people like kim kardashian have been talking about her a lot of people have been talking about her but they talk about her as though they are doing the work and i needed to do a film that says no I appreciate the fact that they are they're, that they're helping, but they're not doing the work. I needed to make a film about the woman who's actually doing the work. And her name is attorney, my angel Cody, please look her up. She is, uh, she's a hero. I mean, I, I mean, I'm overwhelmed. I've worked on it for three years and uh, it's just, I, I'm a little bit tired, I guess, of seeing um, personal opinion celebrity kind of tapping into things when there's actually a woman who her father has been in and out of prison she became a lawyer 
all the women in the film, they all have had uh, parents in and out of prison and then they became attorneys. They are all black and brown women who have been systemically suppressed. And so to do a film like this, I, I, you know, people ask me why I did it. I would say, why wouldn't I do it? Mm -hmm. Like if I had the means to do something like this, you know, I have a lot of things I'd like to do a film on. I'd like to do a film on ageism. I'd like to do a film. I'd like, I've written scripts. There's a number of things I'd like to Don't do. Don't you want to do about, you need to do about a film about the LGBT community. Just saying. Well, but, but I'm saying, <laughs> but I'm saying even to the LGBT community, I'm saying that modern day slavery in the prison, just the, the prison system is more important. If we do not correct this first, Mm -hmm. Our stories are not as relevant, in my opinion, meaning our country is started with slavery, and this is modern day slavery continuing. And I'm being very, very strong and vocal as a white woman who has so much privilege. So if I didn't start with this, I can't talk about LGBTQ. Oh, I right. can't talk about ageism. I can't talk about feminism. I can't talk about anything. That's why when I reached out to, to Durga and I said, hey, do you like this movie? Do you think that this is, you know, and, for, and, and Durga, I mean, I'd like to pass the baton to Durga because I don't think I should be the one talking about it. Well, it is your film, but you're absolutely right. And people don't even think about it. Uh, or or I, should, I should say some people don't even think about it. I mean, I watched uh, Ava DuVernay's film thir 13th and was just floored by that and i would love to see your two films like on a double bill together um because people don't realize that the the exception to uh you know the abolishment that the emancipation proclamation is that basically if you break a law they can snatch you right back up and throw you in jail and use you for cheap slave labor and it's totally legal and it is modern day slavery and that is why the incarceration levels of uh, people of color has risen exponentially because it's a legal way to keep people enslaved. Um, although, Nicole, I would say I would love for your next project. I am dying to find somebody who is a documentarian who will do a project, an in-depth expose on QAnon. Somebody needs I to do it. Would be happy. <laughs> I would be so happy to I'm do that. I'm moving on. I yeah. would be I would, be, I would be so happy to do that because I already have so many ideas on how that is systemically also adding to the problem. But yeah. Going back, but going back to what, what, what Gay Ann's question was, it's, it's so interesting because I keep getting, I mean, I'm about to go do a whole bunch of press about this film and everything that I've been doing when reality is, is that people like you, Durga, who have been posting about this regularly on top of it, you keep like literally... You, you know, your family, your your background, everything about you, you have had to deal with something that is so put upon you in ways that only you can describe because you yeah. have parents who are doctors, you have parents who are, you know, not part of the criminal justice system, yet it, it does, it is something that we have to talk about very openly. And oh, we don't, yeah. there was three strikes is three strikes still a law now or has it been struck down? I, did they, did they, I thought maybe in one of the last elections it was rescinded, but I don't, I, I'm not but the sure. The people are still in prison, of course. Yes, I, they you are. Guys, this is the problem with the three strikes drug law. Nobody knows. Yeah. That's why I made the film. People, like I went, we got into the Pan-African Film Festival in Crenshaw. The people in the community did not know if the, if the law was still existing. Oh. Of course it's existing. I believe it is. Like my angel, my angel called me last week to tell me she got eight people out. I'm sorry, she got four people out in eight weeks because of this. The point being that it's 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 something that we sweep under the rug, not because we are all bad people. It's just because this is how we do it. This is how we enslave people. Like we just quietly do it. Nobody really knows what the law is. Nobody really knows how it works, but I made a film to show you how it works. Nicole, yeah. at, at what good. stage was your film in when this summer sort of erupted? Did you notice a change then in support for your film? And 
you know, it feels to me, and I, you know, what do we know as white girls, right? But it feels to me like this might be different this time where people might be paying more attention. I know me, I'm personally paying more attention perhaps than I did in the past. I, I, I think that the Black, Black Lives Matter movement has helped because people are understanding on a different level. Yet I've been working on this film for three years. Uh, it, it's, it's something where we can't let it go. We just can't. It's one of those things that needs that snowball. It needs that this led to this led to this to, to make people finally go, all have, right, enough. But we have to no. hold ourselves accountable. We have to hold ourselves accountable. And how do we do that? The only way to do it is to be aware, make sure you right. know what the laws are, you know, like uh, make sure you understand that the law is still in place. It is something where there's over 200,000, I'm sorry, 2,000 people who are still in prison based on this law and it's it's systemic slavery i'm sorry I just, I don't know. wait wait no wait I'm no sorry, Erica, wait hold on let me jump in Fine. everybody you're watching between the sheets mm -hmm. podcast if you want to join the conversation please call us we do take live callers 323-524-2599 that's 323-524-2599 please we have nicole jones Carla Collins, Durga, Cara, Cheryl, Jenny. We're a little deep right now, but I think it's because it's important to really discuss what is going on in this community. And I agree with Nicole. It is the, it's, it, if you don't attack this or you don't address this, then moving forward, there really isn't anything else. You're dealing with something that was fundamentally put in place that sort of everything is structured on. So please join the conversation. Yes, we're going to laugh later. Just calm down. Let's get through the important stuff. And we have a medium on the show. So if we've got dead callers, we can take them <laughs> <Yes>. too. <laughs> That's true. Three, five, two, four, two, five, nine, nine. Go ahead, Derek. I'm sorry. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. So California Proposition 36 in 2012 actually did modify it. And se several other states have modified it. So it's not as draconian as it used to be. And it's now... Um, just like really new serious felony convictions uh, apply. Whereas before it could be really arbitrary. Like if somebody Baby had a bicycle, whatever, and then they stole a loaf of bread, that could count as one of their strikes and they could go right. to jail for their lives. I so mean, some, some states have modified it and lessened the effect of it, but it is, it, it is still there. I mean, does this shit happen in Canada? I mean, is it like just- But can I add one thing? Can I add one thing, Garrett Gann? Yeah, please. Um, one of the bigger problems of even being a filmmaker, making a film of this, like what I made, is we don't need people like me speaking about it. We don't need people like Kim Kardashian speaking about it. We need people like Durga talking about it. We need people like Attorney My Angel Cody talking about it. Because Ava DuVernay. Ava, Ava DuVernay. We do not need more white women talking yeah. or white people. I disagree. I disagree too. We I need disagree. more people talking in general. Yeah. Everyone needs to shout from the rafters. This is fucking shit has to stop. Wait, wait. Let me tell you why I disagree. Black people have been talking yeah. about this. I'm we sure. We have been saying it. Yeah. We have been marching. We have been protesting. And white America doesn't want to hear it from us because right. they're they're just like la 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 la. Oh, black people are angry and scary, and I don't want to know. It takes the people who are inherently part of the power structure to change the power structure. So we do need more people and voices like yours because they don't pay attention to us. They don't give a shit what we think about it because it's just our problem and it's something they don't have to Correct. deal with. And I agree. We, we need more white women to speak on this because sadly, too fucking stupid many of us voted for that asshole again last it's time not we about, need to speak it's up. not about us it's not about us it's about but i know it's not about us but we still need to to i think just everyone needs to go it's wrong it's wrong it's wrong because too many of us are going well you know i mean what we can do on, this is the problem one, 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 could i could say one thing could i please say one thing no <laughs> <laughs> what, what i'm saying Jesus, what I'm you're saying a lot as I'm doing as I'm doing publicity for this film, is I keep passing the mic to my angel. I keep passing the mic. Yeah. They keep asking me what I think, and I'm like, "Why are you asking me? Ask my angel. She is the attorney. She is the 
woman who has a, a father who's been in and out of prison. She is a woman who literally is doing so much. You don't need to hear my voice. But you know what, Nicole? If she was a white woman doing this, unfortunately, people would pay attention. And I agree with Durga. It's kind of like, it's just another person of color just saying that. So yeah, I think it's really important that white privileged people like us, we get that out there. As much as I agree with you about the celebrities and the Kim Kardashians and, you know, but people listen to them. They've got the forum, they've got the audience, they have the voice. That's why the power of celebrity, no matter how fucked up they are, they make or break things. And it's insane to think that. But I think as people, I think by you putting together this film, you know, you understand and everybody else will understand that it's her that's actually doing the work that's out there. But you, as a privileged white woman, are the only one because unless another person of color who is famous would do this, you have taken a stand by going out there, doing this to get the word out. So yep. I, I, I just, I mean, but, I know but, what but, you're but, saying. But please, but please, I, I don't, do not, do not paint me with a savior person. It is not. No, a no, no. You know what? Here's the thing. White, it's white not. people, I think white people need to speak out on this, but we need to be really low on the bill. <laughs> but we need to do it. We need to be an additional voice. We need to, everyone's voice needs to sing this message. And for, uh, you know, but, but you're right. I get what you're saying. And if you're sitting on the same stage, then yes, she should speak to it because she lived it. But well, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to defer to, to Durga because Durga was incredibly helpful. She actually watched my film. She actually gave me the kindness to watch the film and give an opinion. And, and I was scared to death to show Durga the Why? Film. Because Why? I just, I just, I wondered what you thought, and 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 then when you came back to me and you said you were proud of me, it meant the world to me, and I'm gonna cry, Ralph. Please I, cry. I, 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 I want crying. God damn it! <laughs> no, I admire you for taking this on. I really do. I'm gonna give you an example of where I mean, voices have to work with each other. You yeah. can bring the spotlight and the attention, gravitas, but I can bring the experience. Like right. I have a new friend. I love this man. He's, I can't really say who he is, but he's like important in Washington. And he, um, that's all I'm going to say about him. But he, he works with the good guys trying to get at, get like, he was really thrilled that the last administration got out of power. Um, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> he was talking about that, I'm going to say it, that fucking bitch who uh, just got her, her sentence dropped, who tried to have that black man arrested in Central Park when she had her dog off leash. Yeah. Mm. And he was like really proud of the fact that his father started it and he also continued with the practices of restorative justice. And, you know, they, she had five sessions with a psychologist <laughs> where she had to learn about racism and the seeds of blah, blah, blah. And her psychiatrist was like saying, and I really think she learned a lot. And I was like, bullshit. Are you kidding me? This woman willfully, maliciously on the tape says, I'm going to call the police and tell them that a black man is threatening me in Central Park. And I fear for my life. And they made her go to five measly classes. And I explained, he was like kind of upset about it. Cause he, he was, they were all like patting him on the back and like, you did really good. And I was like, no, that kind of ingrained, vicious, malicious, targeted, weaponized racism needs more than a slap on the wrist. If you want to get rid of it, if you really want to wake that woman up, five classes is not going to do it. So, and they, they heard me and nobody else was saying it. And then another black woman came into the conversation and we were, you know, in lockstep and they, they, it had never occurred to them that this wasn't a great way to deal with that kind of ingrained racism. It's like, no, 
to maliciously weaponize racism like that, that comes from a deep place. Uh, and they, he said, I, I hear you, I understand. She should have done some time, yes. uh, even, even like three months, and then had a year of restorative justice. All five classes would have done would have been taught her how to cover the shit up better. Right, yeah, exactly, basically, thank you. Basically, well, it, was, it was just reinforcing her sense of entitlement and her privilege. Mm -hmm. Right, but I have a question, because Carla- Exactly, exactly. Canadian. Canadian. Carla's Canadian. Carla, does this shit happen in Canada? <laughs> well, I did want to, I really wanted to jump in there because uh, here's a good segue. The Central Park bitch is Canadian. Mm. Uh, no way. Did you guys kick her out because she wasn't nice? Yes, yeah. I know. See, but I, I wanted to bring this up because I think there's, a you know, as we're talking now, there has to be owning our shit and and painting realistic pictures and you know i'm with durga I, I you know want to be an ally i think we need many voices becoming one voice i yeah. absolutely agree but and i know anyone listening will be pissed off and yes this is obviously a wonderful country but uh i like many canadians would brag how there was no slavery here i have since been corrected uh -huh. that uh as as you know durga um so it's, but it would be something a decade ago that I would say with pride. And uh, fortunately, I have uh, some friends that filled me in um, otherwise. Uh, there were um, demonstrations here. There was someone in blackface here who was arrested uh, during the Black Lives Matter marches. So although, you know, we don't have a melting pot, we have a mosaic so that you're Italian Canadian, you're Caribbean Canadian, you know, and, uh, and I've always thought that was maybe the better way to go and um you know one word alberta uh so believe me if you head over to calgary or um edmonton not to put too fine a point it's basically a uh, republican light uh they wanted to secede and become part of the united states um there's a lot of there's anti-semiticism um, there's um there's certainly racism and I could give you the sweeping so much better here in Canada and wear that badge, but I think there's a lot of work to be done here as well. And of course there is. So, you know, there's, it's a smaller population and, um, you know, being better than the United States shouldn't be anything anybody is bragging about just to be. <laughs> <laughs> I got two things to say about Canada. I got two things to say. Justin Trudeau was caught in blackface. And Second, yes. Look um, at what happens with all the First Nations people. I have Native Native Canadian friends, and that was going to be the next point. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of Canadians are like, "Well, we didn't have slavery and racism like the U.S." It's like, really? Ask your natives about racism in Canada. They got a story is, for you. It, it's shocking and it's horrific. And uh, I have Indigenous blood. I have been uh, honored, had the honor of hosting several of the Aboriginal business um, galas in the last couple of years. I did a comedic meditation, which is something I'll talk about later. I invented it on the creator. Um, mm -hmm. I did that for the Ontario Native Women's Association in November. And I can tell you that it's. Um, beyond heartbreaking and and it is certainly our our dirty little secret so you have, um to my point i was going to finish with that so you, you know we all have work to do in uh in our own backyards if if i'm being honest but i find it really what i really like about being in the industry and i've seen it from for 32 years and it's really sad for me to say this because women have been around for a long time but a lot of the new stuff coming up the powerful voices in the industry have become women. And I think women, no matter what color, I think women, at least the women that I know, were colorblind because it's more about women. And these are my friends. These are not the general community. I'm not speaking for all women. There is women that are douchebag motherfuckers that have voted for Trump. Um, they're <laughs> despicable. I, 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 we can go on and on about the women that I don't like, and there's a lot more <laughs> of them than I like. But I mean, I think, I think it's really important, especially with like Kamala and say what you want about Pelosi. I like her. Um, you know, women are coming to the forefront and I think we are tired of the men 
and hearing their dialogue and hearing their rhetoric and having them tell us what is right, what is wrong, what is their perception. I am very happy that moving forward in my lifetime that you know women are now finally coming, that they have a voice and people like you, Nicole, and people like you, Carla, and you, Durga, you know, you guys are taking your voice and moving it forward and bringing things to light because you have that forum, including you, Jenny, as well. You know, let's, you know, it, it really is important to me that the next voice of the future is women. And I think people need to hear a new dialogue. And I think we're all ready to give that dialogue no matter what color you are. Because women, most women, some women, we're a little bit more empathetic. Mm -hmm. Women are more, what I believe to be open-minded. Compassionate. Um, compassionate. Maybe. Yeah, I'm more compassionate. So well, I, yeah, and let's, uh, let's find out if we are the voice of the future. What does the chick medium say? All right, go Cheryl, <laughs> you're mine. <laughs> I think we are. I think that divine feminine energy, you know, we're moving into that new age, right? That fifth dimension, new age of Aquarius. You see more women everywhere across the board. I think it is our time and it's going to continue to be our time. And I think we're going to maybe we're going to maybe create better conversations. At least I think we're really good at communication. And I think that's a lot of the breakdown here is a lot of uh, a lot of the government or or these businesses have been judging people. And now, you know, I think women are helping us slow down, take a step back and maybe uh, look a little bit deeper. But I do think with this new light coming, as they say, the new emerging, the age of Aquarius, so to speak, the divine female, it is about looking at people more into their hearts, right? Where, you know, you guys have heard that we're moving more into a heart intelligent society where we're starting yeah. to work more from the heart. So that's where, that's where the women are. Sounds we're already nice. there yeah okay. so carly you were talking about some meditation that you created what the fuck did you do <laughs> <laughs> what okay first of all what the fuck haven't i done dan um actually the best question from there and wait a minute out. i know we can start with an even better who haven't you done sorry <laughs> oh, you know what i talk a big game i'm like you know really durga knows i'm i'm a bit on this person there but this is something that mm -hmm. i developed over a year ago and i feel like you know, the timing sort of met up with it. Um, what I do basically, I'm calling it chuckle and chill. And I do about a half hour of stand up comedy, get everybody laughing, get your endorphins, release some energy. So you get out of your own head. And then I take everyone through a authentic, original guided meditation with my, you know, phone sex operator adjacent voice. And um, <laughs> there's some science to this because, uh, both laughter and meditation puts you in your brainwave is in a gamma state. So uh, people seem to go into, you know, if nothing else, a deeper relaxation more quickly. And, uh, and it's, I mean, who doesn't need to laugh and relax right now? So uh, uh, honestly, I've been doing the, you know, and, and also obviously zoom comedy, as I'm sure Jenny will back me up is <laughs> very much the bridesmaid to, I mean, no one's, there's no orgasm with Zoom comedy. No one's, you know, really <laughs> jazzed about it. But oddly enough, the comedic meditation, the online delivery system is almost more ideal because people don't feel judged and they can be pantless. They don't have to drive home. They can just roll over and go to sleep. And it was just to take, I did, because I believe that we're going into the heart brain as well. If you can get past my magnificent chest and get to my big, Part of a whale, but uh, it's a man control. You've got to answer. I, I can't. I, I have to look at it. My heart. <laughs> but you know what? Though that makes such perfect sense, just because, like, I think you know when you get people laughing and they're just, it just gets them more relaxed. It takes the edge off. It takes the whatever defenses you had up are really hard to have up when you're laughing. And I think sometimes people come into meditation either like either like wanting to do it or, oh my God, I can't stop my brain or this isn't going to work, blah, blah, blah. And I think those last two would really be, be, you know, mitigated by getting them laughing and relaxed first. So that's freaking brilliant, Carla. Well, you know, because I was so struck by how everyone in LA, and I think Dirk and I would joke about this, like everyone's a guru and you <laughs> walk in and they're always getting them, you know, hang on, I'm getting a message from the Archangel Michael. And I had this one Willow, not her real name. 
and she was talking like with that mid-atlantic accent like the old time she's like all right the great spirit is a great experience eat a carrot and i'm like bitch you're from michigan like can't we make this more accessible why does it have to be so intimidating or you know you're you know people were being told they were doing it the wrong way there is no it's you know it's a bit fight club there's no wrong way to <laughs> decompress or to relax so so i just thought I, you know i just thought a little humor took the That's you know the preciousness and off then of it. the the guru the guru cruiser type guys like i i had matched with this guy on tinder and um i wanted to meet him he, I think he disappeared on me, but I was like, I found him uh, and he was going to be going to the Ignite Festival, which is this three-day festival out in Joshua Tree, where you like take classes all day and then spin fire all night and learn how to play with fire. And he was going because he's a photographer. So I decided, screw it, I'm going to go. And I got a tent and all this. And I went and camped out in the desert for three days. And when I saw him, well, I smelled him before I saw him. That was like, ew. Um, yeah, he, he smelled like the, like the people who think it's like really cool and natural not to bathe yeah. for like days. And it was just like, yeah. dude, you're rank. And, and I could see him like talking to these girls that were like way too young. Oh yeah. You're like, aura is like really open. I can help you open yourself more. And I'm like, you just want to fuck her, okay? <laughs> let me, let me, like, I tell you something. Carla's your... got a whole bunch of pussies around her right now. They're just doing, like, uh, it's a, Nicole is zenning with her pussy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm clutching mine. That's really hell. <laughs> sure. My other one is screaming in the background. Sorry. No, you may, I mean, but, you know, Carla makes a good point that there's a lot of people that sort of sit there and, become guru and and you know you're the real deal so how does like that affect you because i know there are skeptical people and when you have people like that around it make it must make your what you know you and and the others on your level like unbelievable so like how do you deal with shit like this yeah you know i just really try to uh look just like carla said we're all grounded we're all the same and this is a natural you know being intuitive and meditating and connecting with archangels and all of that it's actually a very natural instinct and i kind of feel like the guru thing i'm hoping at least it's becoming less you know and maybe people are realizing that they're they're they are connected themselves right they are their own guru so to speak and just throw yeah. out the word really completely. Uh, but yeah, so um, I, um, you know, I, I don't hang out with them myself or I don't hang around them. I don't attract them. Uh, but uh, look, you just have to give them love that they're on their path and, you know, they're, they're, they're hopefully they're helping more than, than hurting. You know, it's all I can say. Hopefully they're doing something, some good. No, I mean, I think I, Nicole looks like she's sleeping, but do you guys remember, do you guys remember when Nicole gifted us that vibrator that, you know, cause I was Mr. Hitachi. You're on mute, Nicole. Um, yeah. Would you like to know why I'm sleeping? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> uh, cause I really hear everything everybody is saying, but I think that it's a really tough time right now. And we forgive people who are bad and marginalizing people and uh I just i i literally am in a state of just trying to comfort myself because uh we got through donald trump i know this might sound like a tangent but forgive me but uh just hearing anybody talking about anything that doesn't sound like a word taking responsibility for how awful it is that we have so many men who are just saying whatever they want and I it's bought. exhausting. What's that? It's exhausting. It's exhausting. It is and, exhausting. And maybe that's what you're feeling from me is I'm exhausted. I, I just literally like took my break and just went, I can't do this right no, now. No, you're fine. Take a break. It's fine. We're going to talk about vibrators. That's why I wanted to wake you up for a moment. <laughs> Not to diminish no, what you're talking about. It's just so frustrating for me because I just don't know what the answer is. And but you know what? I have to say. Miss, you are doing your part. Mm -hmm. So yes. you are part of the awakening. Mm -hmm. And so you can sit here and say, 
You don't want to make it about you and people who know you, we know you that you're not a narcissist. You're not, you're not doing this for you, but you are a vehicle to move something forward. So I think you really truly need to step into that power and acknowledge, acknowledge that you are the catalyst to putting this to light. I agree. Nicole, like, you know, you may not, none of us know the answer, but my God, we're starting to ask the question and films yeah. like you and what you're doing is, is making us all wake the hell up. I mean, you were, you were three years in, a, in advance of everything that's going on now. And I think, I think it's kind of divine guidance that I'm you ended up doing what you, what you did and when you did it and, and, the powerful impact it's going to have now is that sometimes we just have to start asking. We, we don't know the answers and that's it. What, you know, we, no one does, but we got to start trying. And I think that's just, I think it's amazing. I think both what you and Carla are doing are like really, you know, I'm just it's so needed right now. We need positivity in this world. We've been so brutalized. I, I you know, sometimes I watch the, freaking Fox just to, you know, hear what the other side is saying or whatever. And I was listening the other day and I realized I hadn't been amped up like that in a really long time. Cause they've taken that dickwads Twitter away and mm -hmm. we're not hearing about it all the time. And I think it's, we need the love and the meditation and the positivity. And we need to ask those questions you're asking, Nicole. It's yeah. like, that's, that's what's the start, man. I mean, yeah. I would like to right now, if we were in studio, give you the biggest hug yeah. and say Me too. And say thank you. Right. Uh, I'm just really too. tired. I'm just really tired. I don't know what else to do. I'll I'll tell you what you're feeling. You're starting to when you when I've seen like when some of my friends and stuff when white people start to get a glimpse into the unbelievable yes ma'am yes ma'am yes that we, we carry. That it's exhausting. I mean, just thinking about what we carry is exhausting. Thank you. We're we're we have generations of this, of mm -hmm. this this weariness. Black people are weary. Absolutely. We are weary, but we. I mean, and to tired. the point where our DNA has literally been affected yes. by our history of slavery, and the and the the generational trauma that we have experienced. So thank when, you, when you, someone you, you. becomes present to it, it's so shocking when you really start to think, oh my God, this is what I've been walking around ignoring all this time. And they lit, it can be, you get so overwhelmed, you just shut down. Yes, ma'am. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. That's exactly what I'm feeling. Thank you. Dirk. I know, sweetheart. I know. I love you so much, and I love you even more now for what you're doing. So <laughs> I'll thank you. For that. It's just, it's just, I like, I'm falling asleep on the podcast because I can't take it. I don't have your strength. I don't have your strength. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you You'll, do. You push oh, two cubes. It doesn't mean I'm going to give up. It doesn't mean I'm going to give up. It doesn't mean I'm going to give up. No, you won't, you won't give up. You have strength. You did something I didn't do. Seriously, you grew a whole other person in you and pushed it out of a hole the size of a gumball twice. So don't wow, that visual still is painful. The visual is still fucking painful for me. Thank you, Durga. Thank you, Durga. You're yeah, you're welcome. But wait a minute. Let's talk about another Canadian just for a minute. Who? We have our favorite Canadian with us right here. Let's talk about that son of a bitch, our least favorite Canadian, Lion Flying Ted. What in the hell, ladies? What in the hell? You he left his it. fucking dog. This son of a bitch left for I Cancun know. and left the dog. He left the dog in <laughs> the freezing house. The whole family left the dog. <laughs> you mean he throws his daughters they... under the bus? Oh my God. Well, the fact that he is walking around with that Billy Ray Cyrus meets mm -mm. mohawk meets used <laughs> car salesman haircut and that's the best decision he made that is the best decision he made in the last <laughs> short while somebody right. described his new look as cosplay wolverine <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he tried to lie his way out of it 
Of oh, course. I'm going to drop him off overnight, and he's got a suitcase the size of a steamer truck going <laughs> on the plane, too, <laughs> that he's wheeling onto the plane. And then the mm-hmm. coolest part is that they're friends. The, their friends basically sold them out and, and like, leaked the tweet, uh, the, the text that his wife was sending. We're cold. We're going to, to Four Seasons, and it's only this much. We have great security. Come on down. <laughs> So they were just busted by their friends because nobody <laughs> likes that son of a bitch. <laughs> nobody. Hey, everybody. Well, you, but know you... The, you know the guy who's the lead of uh, that show you on Netflix, the formerly from Gossip Girl? Have any of you watched that? Yes. No. No. So That's it's very funny no. because he's like, it's, it's, it's told from the point of view of the stalker. But basically, yes. he puts on his baseball cap and then can be a foot away from his victim. And it's like the invisibility cloak. And I felt like Ted Cruz <laughs> was doing that with a mask. Like, I have a mask on. No one will see me going to Cancun. And it's like, <laughs> dude, you know, you still look like Grandpa Munster's illegitimate right? child. Like, I don't think anyone was fooled by the mask. But I, no. my last thing is that, is this, it, was it an actual, I saw a tweet of his from 2016, and I don't know if it was doctored or not. I didn't do any research on it, but a Ted Cruz tweet from 2016 said, I'll believe in climate change when Texas freezes. Yep. <laughs> it's, he actually said that. He yes, actually he did. That. He absolutely did. <laughs> There's a lot of things of his, a lot of tweets and, and, and quotes of his that have not, have not aged well at all. He was... He was freaking out at somebody else for taking a vacation during the pandemic after telling people to stay home, which is exactly what he just did. Oh my God. By the way, he's only half Canadian. He's only yeah, half right. Canadian. Yeah, oh, okay. you, don't to, you don't have to claim yeah. the, rest, the other half. Everyone, you're listening to Between the Sheets, um, 323-524-2599. We do actually do have a caller, but Nicole stepped away. So I'm assuming she's coming back and they want to talk to Nicole. So... Um, Hey, Tony or Kristen, can you just let them know that she stepped away and it, can they call back when she appears back in the, in the, um, in the box? That would be awesome. Cause I don't want to <laughs> keep them on hold unless they want to come on. But if they have a thing for Nicole, again, it's three, two, three, five, two, four, two, five, nine, nine. Um, between the sheets, Jenny McNulty, Cara Noble, Cheryl Murphy, Carla Collins, Jerga McBroom, me, Gam Bruno and Nicole Jones, who is here, um, and stepped away. Um, so Carla, question you have podcasts what's what well, tell me about the podcast tell me about the the deal that just came give us a little bit more insight of what that's what that's about well the podcast the the uh, first one um i started just before christmas carl collins rocks the elmo i i thought of you because you guys would love this it's talking to so the elmo is this iconic um musical venue mm-hmm where I did two shows of comedy, but it was closed. And this billionaire dude who was on Canada's Shark Tank, in fact, Dragon's Den was the original before Shark Tank. He bought it, sunk all this money into it. The pandemic hits. Um, I became close to he and his family when I was quarantining here. So I said, why don't we, you know, it's just sitting there languishing this beautiful venue. So we had, um, I've been talking to people like Gowan, Kim Mitchell, a lot of these are Canadian rockers who would then treat us to like um, Gordon Depp from the Spoons, these phenomenal, very private and intimate concerts. And Mm. I just felt the perfect three-way between comedy and music and spirituality. We were trying to say we're, you know, we're metal health meets mental health. So (laughs) that, um, you know, just like, you know, it's not going to change your life, but I, I would say just because we're in a shutdown doesn't mean that we have to shut down. So we're trying to lift some spirits that way. And um, the doucheless vegan is, um, <laughs> gay, gay fiance is a lifelong vegan. Uh, <laughs> and um, when I moved here, or when I moved here, I'm not officially moved here, but my, my extended <laughs> stay, I thought, oh, I'm here for a couple of weeks, I'll go full vegan. I'm usually like pescatarian, but you know, I've dabbled. And, uh, and it's, it's really been a wonderful thing. You know, I've been an animal rights activist forever. So it was kind of the logical step, but I said, and he's a phenomenal cook. And I said, we need to put out a cookbook. Um, but also we have to, I said, we got to do everything that vegans don't with all due respect to vegans, like, because, you know, they can drive you crazy. Like, like don't announce to everybody that you're vegan when you're at a funeral. No one can, like my mom just died, you know, I'm vegan. Right. So that's, that's why it's a get it's a guide to living a you know leading a delicious life without being a dick 
Like you don't have to, even if people just want to be, you know, like the Catholics with their fish on Fridays, um, if people just want to have a, a day, you know, a, a day or two where they're doing meatless Mondays. So it's no judgment. It's not a cult. It's for the, the vegan curious, the bi vegans, the intermittent, the vegan adjacent and everybody else. So well, um, Jenny's vegan and she's not a douchebag. So no, exactly. <laughs> there, it's a good support. I saw her at the support group. Um, and uh, <laughs> so we just so we're just putting again, you know me, I'm just putting some humor into something that I think is tremendous for the environment, tremendously compassionate, great for animals, great for our health. And it's like, if you want to dabble, you know, come and uh, join us. And, and and also we're just giving some life hacks on how easy it is because people have this concept that it's, you know, just, oh, I can't imagine if I become vegan, it's going to be too difficult and I will be ostracized and I won't be able to hang. And um, so that's why we're just providing recipes where to get the best stuff. Because obviously some vegan hamburgers are like, well, that was sawdust and, uh, kitty, <laughs> and kitty litter and I want to kill yeah. myself. But like, for example, a w has an, an amazing burger. So I was learning so much from my Obi-Wan that um, basically he, he tells, you know, he gets the, the, the nuts and bolts of it. And uh, as always, I'm like, being vegan means never having to eat crow and doing really, <laughs> now I'm, just soy, I'm just soy milking my jokes instead of milking my jokes, Jenny. It's the same old shit. It's mm -hmm. just no. I always, but like for me though, cause I'm, I, I've never liked the word lesbian to me. It always just sounds so clinical and scary. And like, you know, when you tell someone you're vegan, they roll their eyes. I'm like, so, okay. So I'm a lesbian vegan and I'm a comedian. No one's going to come to my show. So I say I'm a plant-based gay. <laughs> you're a lesbian vegan. So everybody got between the sheets podcast here on United Broadcasting Network, 323-524-2599. Nicole, you actually had a caller that wanted to talk to you, but they hung up um, as you did. So everyone, Nicole is back. If you can't see her, 323-524-2599. She will answer any calls. Um, Carla will give, Carla does great phone sex. Um, you know, she, um, she can actually take us through a guided orgasm if she wants to, you know, I like, I, I'd love to hear that one. Um, I can't, that's, my, I can't see my, there's my screen right now because I don't have my glasses on, but, um, I will answer any questions. That's perfectly fine. You look, you're still hot and beautiful. And I know that's shallow, but I can't help myself. <laughs> three, two, three, Maybe that's why I love you. I love you. I love you all. I miss you all. I mean, I'm yeah, going to say yeah. this a thousand times. Um, you know, one of my, fa I called Sammy, by the way, because I wanted Sammy to join us. That's Sam Phillips. Um, she was part of the single life. And uh, she is the one who actually tapped into me and said to me, you need to have a podcast. So um, I gave her a buzz because I thought, but we, and I wasn't going to tell you guys, although Durga kind of knew. Um, and then you all kind of knew. And I reached out to her and I hadn't heard from her. So she texted me back today and said she actually had vocal cord surgery. So um, she's doing oh, well, wow. but yeah. her voice is still not up to par. But you have to know, I really hope this vocal cord surgery doesn't fuck up her voice because Sam used to go, hey, I'm Sammy Phillips. I mean, it was that deep low. And I hope she doesn't fucking come back and go, hi, I'm Sammy Phillips, because that would yeah. really suck. <laughs> um, but anyway, the caller is back for Nicole. So let's oh. um, let's bring that person on. Hello, hello. Welcome to hi. Between the Sheets. Hi. Who's calling? Who's calling? And Nicole is back. I'm here. And hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Joe Papa Dennett. Um, Nicole, when I was listening to your story about your, your project and how involved you were and um, when you were saying, you know, you were just tired and I, I was watching you and it just looked like you're just heartbroken from the whole thing that people can do that to others. Um, Thank you. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it just seems no, like this right. complete and utter heart crushing heartbreak. And um I, I was just going to say the only thing that I know to do to that, I'm not a therapist or anything, but, um, it, but she is can Canadian, just, <laughs> but I am Canadian, <laughs> um, <laughs> is to get out into nature or something, you know, just got to get out into nature because as corny as this might sound, mother earth, I mean, she's giant and she will take your, take your heartache so that you can um, not have to carry it so heavily on you. What you're doing is very empathic. And but I see the heartbreak is just crushing you, so that's what I wanted to say. That means the world to me, and thank you. And I apologize for tearing up right now because um, 
I grew up in the mountains. I grew up in Utah. Um, I'm not a Mormon, but I grew mm -hmm. up in the mountains and I, nature is everything to me. And so thank you for that. At the same mm. time, um, there's something that I learned about and I had to learn about it, uh, which is systemic racism and making a film about it. And um, white people of privilege, we don't understand how privileged we are. And I'm going to have to try to figure out a way to talk about it because it's terrifying and destructive and horrible. And thank God for Durga for being a friend to me to help me guide me through it, but also my other friends because we have to do better. We just have to do better. I can disappear into the Utah of my mind and I could go to the mountains and I can go anywhere I want, but. Um, so sister, you know what's really thing? It's, you know, I think once there's a realization, because we do have white privilege, and no one, not a one of us, can sit here except Durga. Um, you know, we can empathize, we can support, but we don't know what it feels like. And I think when you tackle something like this, Carl, mm -hmm. Nicole, I think, you know, it's kind of, I mean, I know it is. It's embarrassing. I mean, for me, it's, it's embarrassing. embarrassing to be a white woman and yes. know that you did not feel this before. Correct, and that's what I'm saying. I think a lot of I had made a lot of what you Yeah, I think a lot of what you're going through. Yeah, I, Gan, I had to make a fucking movie. Yes, myself. Yes, about exactly. what you did. But the thing is, you did the movie. But you, you did. You got yourself. You're carrying around this weight of, you know. Just you let, me carry, let me carry it because get god damn it everybody else is carrying it around forever exactly so now you know what you know for mm. three years you were carrying it around it, it's you it was you. you eat breathe sleep and now it's kind of like giving birth a movie is always like giving birth it starts out with you except instead of you know instead of you know eight months or however people carry babies i don't know i never had one i don't know if it's eight or nine i don't know but you carry it and then you give birth and when you but, give birth, you but, but but it doesn't matter if people like Durga who lives it every single day. But it doesn't matter if you're not making the movie for Durga. You're not I, making the no, movie. No, I am making it for Durga. Are, it if I'm, making, degree, it, I'm are, making it for every woman. I understand that part. But the thing is, they live it. They don't. They know it. But I think mu much more important is you're making a movie to have others who have no idea or they they think they know. That's for me the important part of making the movie, not to tell the story. <clears throat> the story is important, but it's to get the message out there to the people who would never want to confront the story or push it under the carpet or recognize it. So yes, I think to me, that is the achievement here, to make it what, sort what, of what everyone can What does Durga think? I think yeah. it's both. I think that you made this movie so that people can be made aware of the problem. But the reason you want people to be made aware of the problem is so that life for people like me and the people in the film can be better. Right. So thank you. That's what I meant to say. Um, Joe, are you still there? Do you have more to say? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I do have more to say. Um, yeah, I think it's wonderful that you've given this a voice and that's really super important. I just saw you kind of collapsing there. So that's why I called in to just say, I don't want you to go run and hide anywhere. I, I just to rejuvenate yourself so that you don't get crushed by it. I'm going to tell you a little story. I went on a pilgrimage to uh, as many camps in Germany and Poland as I could and visited as many synagogues. I'm not Jewish, but that experience was heart crushing to an nth degree. And I still tell some of those stories because of the absolute cruelty and uh, scientifically planned cruelty that humans can do to one another. So I do feel you when it comes to um, having compassion and going, how can people do this to one another? How can people do this? 
It's, yeah. it's just almost, it just doesn't make any sense. It makes your brain, brain explode. I just didn't want you to lose your self in it. I wanted you to be able to rejuvenate yourself. So that's why I called in. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And, and also, you know, Durga's, I think her mother was, a, I think Durga's mom is a, uh, was a. Uh, First black female cardiologist with a private practice in the United exactly. States. Exactly. And do you understand that black women were used as scientific, like the same way they did it in the Nazis. They, they did. Oh, well, yeah. That, oh, that yeah. Henrietta, Henrietta. Not just black women. Wait, what was it called? Henrietta. Yeah. But they, but they, but they, but let me correct you. Like, they did not believe that black women felt pain. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that. They mm -hmm. did not believe that black women felt pain. They, Correct. Like, yes, I'm aware. They, they did scientific mm. experiments in America as slaves. Yeah. They, they did gynecological experiments on women. Yes. believing that they did not feel pain correct yeah and so mm -hmm. while i sit here crying with my cat fuck me it's not really about me it's just i'm i'm saying i want to try to register the the impact of the way that we systemically disrespect black and brown bodies in this country. And that's something that I have to try to figure out how to try to do a better job of. But I, I'm mm -hmm. trying to grow stronger and I'm trying to do a better job and I'm gonna keep trying. You're doing great. I think you're on the right path. Yeah, you're on the right path. You made a movie. Bingo. Well, thanks, Joe. Step. All thanks. right, thank oh, you. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. All right, All right talk to you later. Bye-bye. I want to mention another adjacent or, you know, subject, which is I've had, I have, you know, a friend that, uh, Gail, you've actually met her. Um, and she's very, very much a feminist. She's, she's also a lesbian and, um, she can be very militant at times. And we've gotten into huge fights when it comes to intersectionality. Um, because I've often found her wanting to dismiss my concerns about racism in favor of feminism. And I think a lot of you may know that when the suffragette movement first started in the United States, they purposely excluded black women from yes. having a vote. Mm -hmm. So I'm just urging that all of us be partners. I mean, if anybody's ever looked on my Facebook page, you'll see I am like constantly, I'm a, I'm a warrior for any marginalized person and for anyone that's not experiencing equal rights. I am fierce when it comes to my LGBTQ friends. And I have slit throats many a day for people <laughs> who have been transphobic and homophobic and all that kind of stuff. And I just want to remind everyone that while we're all trying to seek our equilibrium where uh, equality is concerned, we can't do it at the expense of another marginalized community. So just watch yourself when it comes to that, because I notice it happens. Um, and I hate to say it, the, I experience mo more from white women than anybody else. So I'm just putting that out there. I'm not saying, I'm not calling anybody here out in particular. I'm just asking that you be aware of that because it happens a lot. It does happen. Mm -hmm. what, would you, what would your suggestion be Durga to be a better ally what just I... notice that if you are if you are saying well I have it much worse than anybody else and what you're saying doesn't matter then that's what I'm talking about because I will say black women have tended to be at the bottom of the totem pole because we're women and we're black. That does not mean that, I mean, so I, I use this as a way that I can relate to every one. I mean, I've had Jewish people come to me and say, you don't know what it's like to be a Jew. And I'm like, well, considering one of my relatives fled uh, Poland during World War II and was Jewish, I do have Jewish ancestry. 
I also have Sicilian ancestry. Italians uh, were treated, you know, one of the biggest mass lynchings in this country was Italians. So I got all of it. You can't, you can't out <laughs> oppress me. Okay. Oh, would, 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 but do you have any Neanderthal? Because I do. But, but, Durga, Durga, could I ask you, would you agree that the number one oppressor is race in this country, or would you disagree that it is sexism? I would say that it's both of those. It's white male privilege. Absolutely. It's white male privilege, both of them equally mm -hmm. because if you look at the signers of the declaration of independence they were all white men mm -hmm. talking about all men are created equal meanwhile the majority of them owned slaves and would not allow their wives to vote right mm -hmm. so it's equal and that's my but, point but, 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 but would you pick one over the other meaning no why should i there's no need to quantify oppression <laughs> I agree, Durga, because that's where the problem starts. And I think that's what Durga was saying, is you can't quantify something. You can't quantify it. it oppression. If it, I mean, it, it, that's what she was saying. It's yeah, all, I hear you. It, it's I hear all you. equal. It's not this, this plight or that plight. It bottom rooted in the same bullshit of closed mindedness oppression and discrimination and it takes and on so many and privilege and takes on so many other forms that pretty much anybody but a white male is the only one not suffering an untouchable and fucking teflon yep. and, well, and then on top of it when when i made my documentary my the topic of my documentary was my angel cody who was this attorney she was a she was a, a pre-med she was in pre-med she could have had an answer for cancer. She Ooh. had so many things she could have done. Yeah. Instead, she had to fight this oppression. Right. Like, could you imagine a brilliant mind like that, who, like, we saw the movie Hidden Figures. You don't have to like the movie. I'm saying, if you have brilliant minds that are capable of doing things that could literally advance our entire humanity and we are oppressing them to have to deal with this bullshit. It's frustrating. You know, let me tell you something. My mom was, you know, a brilliant physician. She really was. And uh, I didn't know this one. I knew some of the other stories. My sister was telling me the other day that when she was a resident, she saved this white woman's life. And when the woman kind of came out of her coma, when she came out of, you know, being unconscious and looked over and saw that her doctor was a black woman, she thought she had died and was in hell. Wow. She literally thought she had gone to hell because her doctor was a black woman. <laughs> but let me, but let me ask you, but I mean, literally, Durga, with your mind, if you did not have to deal with this bullshit, could you imagine what your mind is capable of well my mind is still capable of a lot of things you mean yeah, you shouldn't have to deal with this bullshit <laughs> but i kind of think i chose to be born into this body i believe that I too do have a voice and i have this time this crazy yeah. time i think i chose to be here I, at I, this think, time. I think what it's i'm this saying i'm thinking I'm, i think what i'm saying is that like we we literally applaud einstein and yet I've met so many women who are brilliant beyond comprehension, but they are so boggled down with trying to figure out how to correct society's issues. My point is, is that if you had these genius minds. Like my mom. Well, I, I haven't done too badly for myself considering my I first know. score ever was Pink Floyd. I right. know what you're saying. My sister and I have had this conversation. I think I would have probably been a much bigger celebrity or a bigger star than I than I got to because I was held back in some respects by race. Um, black women making the kind of, or black people, black women making the kind of music I wanted to make when I was making that. I had to go to Europe to do it. And then it was the sexism part because they were more backing my partner 
who was the producer who was male. And when I told them stuff like the second album is not going to work because the stuff he's, the, the tracks he's given me to write with aren't that good. They were like, oh, we believe in his vision and blah, blah, blah. And then finally, when we turned in the album, they were like, oh, you were right. But how it is what how, it is. How, how does that, how does, could I ask you a question? How does that feel for you? Because you have this magical voice and it must have been very strange. It was uh, infuriating, of course. But the but here's how I look at it. You know, my mom broke down barriers so that so that my sister and I could get where we got to. And we are breaking down barriers so that, you know, other young women of color can can have more freedom. I mean, when I see I've been freaking out watching the TV lately, seeing how many um, interracial couples, mixed race families. It's just like in every commercial now. And mm -hmm. growing up, I never saw that. And so obviously Still new. playing the hookers, prison inmates that I played as an actor, because that's all they would let me play, did at least get black faces onto the screen to where it has evolved to where it is now. It's a process. And Have you guys seen the show Lovecraft Country or Lovecraft County? Is on oh, yes. No. Yes. It is awesome. And it's, you know, prime, predominantly black cast, except the one crazy, evil, white, all super white person. Um, but well, there's a few of them, but yeah. Yeah, but it's, but it's cool because you, you get, you know, pulled into that story and you watch it. And, you know, I remember thinking, you know, somewhere along the line, it was like, you know, like, what it must be like for you, Durga, for, for any African-American person to not see yourself growing up, to not see yourself in cartoons, to not see yourself in Barbie dolls, to not see yourself anywhere, to watch those kinds of movies where me as a white person, I'm just like sucked into that sci-fi and that cool story. And I'm like, I, I don't, you don't think about it. And it's, that's what it takes. It's not you know, there's yeah. that expression about it's not when you you look at, you know, when they crack down the wall or whatever it is, it's not, and you, you it's, it's the 101st blow that yeah. knocks down the wall. It's not that 101st blow. It's the 100 that came before it that add together. Right. Yeah. The wall down. So, and by the way, can I just add something? Because this is going to yeah. be, just to break it up for a minute, there was a black Barbie doll. Um, I yeah. had her and it was based after Diane Carroll's role in a yep. TV show called Julia. She Julia. Was a nurse. She and can. I actually had that Barbie doll and mm -hmm. I had the biggest crush on Diane Carroll. But <laughs> you're right. I mean, she still, she, she was hot even till the end, even when she was on Dynasty and married Vic Damone. But the point, but then that's my age. So <laughs> I but, used to play with her daughter. She was one of my father's patients. Well, she, she was hot. Cool. She was yeah. hot. Hot. Yeah, she was a beautiful. Hot. Woman. Beautiful. I never played with dolls at all, so I don't really know. I'm just giving you an example of how, book, but I have to tell you, thing. and what you're doing, Nicole, is so it's you know, I know where I, I think I know where you're coming from a little bit in that, like, you don't want to go, hey, look at me, a white person solving the world's problems. It's it's not about you, and you're right, it's not about you, but definitely enough. it doesn't matter what color your voice is, what you're saying, and what you're doing needs to be said and needs to be heard. and if you can get it out there and and let I'm sorry I'm forgetting her name let the attorney speak then then so be it but you know don't own own what you're doing it's awesome you know you don't you don't have to think you're a super savior white person you're just a good filmmaker that's putting an important message out and that in and of itself is important here, so, here. it's here. not the green book it's not the green book um, yeah. but <laughs> you're good. Well, how how would you then because we talk about how divisive it can be when everybody's no we're more oppressed and this group's more oppressed what do you think we should do to unite more so that it's so much stronger with so many more voices all in in many respects maybe you know fighting for the same thing or certainly fighting the the male privileged white dude um <laughs> do you have any because i think okay how do we unite so that we just stop fight? stop stop trying to one-up each other yeah. well exactly that's what and i mean how do we stop that people. though i mean the fact that there is a huge racism problem in the lgbtq community infuriates me yep i'm like really really bitch really i, I that's don't what get i mean it's just so divisive and it's often you know <laughs> who you would think would be uniting to fight yeah. the common enemy so you would think so uh, I, I guess people just need to realize that nobody will advance until we all 
advance. That's exactly. Right. And, yeah. I think, and to wind it up because it's it's coming at our time. I think you're no absolutely way. right. Yeah, I absolutely right, Durga. We all have to advance together, and it isn't about color, language, race, sexuality. We are one. We are human. Yeah, we are human. And that is really the core of who we are. We wear different bodies. We wear, we speak different languages. We are different shades of a beautiful rainbow of colors. And instead of looking at that as a difference, we have to sort of start in a little bit of a spiritual way because it's really from the inside out. Yeah. So um, on that note, I want to thank everybody for watching um, another episode of Between the Sheets podcast. Um, you know, I always said this and I've got my t-shirt on because I had no idea where we're going to be. I mean, yes, I want to show you how beautiful my breasts are, but Gorgeous. <laughs> it's love and it really Aww. truly comes to just love and compassion and empathy and just be kind. I think if we can just be open-minded, but I mean, even to say that is stupid because why being, if you say be open-minded, it's you're already coming from a, a place of judgment. Mm -hmm. So I think we should, Good. We should <laughs> but I don't, I think we really need to, we need to just be neutral and we're all the same. I, I, all I, get same. What you, I, I get what you're saying, but I'm sorry. I'm, Tired of that shit right now. Well, you can. No, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, for, thank, you wait, thank you. But Durga, you can be. No She's one on right. this fucking call. So can has you. the right to. I can support you. I always have people of color. You can't do but, kumbaya right now. What? <laughs> you can't what? do kumbaya right now. You have to do kumbaya. It starts no. at kumbaya. I'm sorry. You We've know. had enough kumbaya. I'm but sorry. the thing That's is. Why happen it That's isn't what and you happen. know what i am tired of people saying it's fucking kumbaya because there are some fucking people like me on this fucking call okay who are we not are kumbaya, kumbaya out exactly okay but the thing is it has to start with like-minded people being in the same mindset for positivity and moving forward and people like nicole and yourself and others to get the word out and to change the mindset but and you can't it, do kumbaya because we're not at kumbaya right now we Wait, are not at kumbaya right now. But it's a moving and a shaking. And that I get it. It needed to happen. And quite frankly, you know, as much as I hate to say it, because I hate that cocksucker. Thank God Donald Trump was in charge because this country needed a big awakening. Yep. And it That's needs true. a huge healing. But it has to start somewhere. So Carla, Pete and Carla, sorry, Carla. Nicole, people <laughs> like you are taking it to the next level. It's kind of like, what was that thing on network? I'm mad as hell yeah, and I'm not right. going to take it anymore. So yeah. there, I know, God, I just yelled. Oh my God, of course. <laughs> um, but I just lost my Canadian, since, since my Canadian possible citizenship. Because Canadian <laughs> citizenship. Yeah. Um, I'm well, never going to be invited back to this podcast. Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? I was just going to say, I want you and Carla back on as I miss you guys. And, yeah. and I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's great. It's great where we all are, where we have come in. It was not great. great it's not great. It's not great. Gay. And it's not great. It's not great. It's, it's really hard. So, it's I'm, not ready. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the show is great. Shut your hole for a okay. second. All right, shut your damn hole. I'm saying this show is great and I'm glad we're all back, okay? Yes. And I would like you and Carla to, when you can and you want to, you guys are always welcome. So- If only I, have, if I, if only I get Durga right by my side because she'll, <laughs> she'll temper me. I got you, boo. I got you. <laughs> I'm right here. But anyway- um, thank you guys for watching. She thank just you. still loves me from when I sucked her finger that time. You remember you know that what? time? I'm when still I having nightmares about you bitches trying to teach me <laughs> how to give a blowjob on a scallion, and I still gagged. So, you know, <laughs> that is stupid. And then there was eel porn. So, I mean, 
there is so much more that we have educated all you listeners of Between the Sheets on over the years. So, you know, um, and, um, but like I said, I miss you guys and um, I appreciate you. Jenny, thank you. Where can people find you? I love you, Kaden. I love you too. It used to get heated like this. You should see me yeah. and Jenny, we're going at it. We all went at it. And yet- We now, always did. We, we always, always did. did. We always did, but it's always, you know what? And I felt like the more you challenge people and the more comfortable you are with the people in your life that you can challenge, the more open and receptive you are to grow. And that you can only do with people who you trust. And I trust these women and all of you implicitly. I, I love you guys. So thank you. So Jenny, tell us again where you are and what the hell you're doing and sports and all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is Benito, Benito Juarez. Where'd he go? Oh my God, we lost him in the green screen. Another pussy lover, another pussy lover. Great. Those pussies oh. are doing so uh, Benito well. Juarez, because we got him in Mexico. Actually, technically, Benito Juarez, Higgins McNulty, but we just call him Benito. <laughs> and uh, I do a show Monday, Wednesday, Friday called the In-House Comedy Chat, where I, I try to uh, I interview amazing, fun women and men and mostly women. Um, and then I do a little walk on the beach trying to get people up and moving and, and exercising and, and feeling a little bit better about life. And I want to thank you so much for including me in your show, Gan. This has been... I, I'm I'm glad to I'm proud to be the rookie on board here. It's been super fun, and thank you for including me. Well, thank you. I wouldn't have it any other way. And you know, the show is all over the place. I mean, sometimes it's deep, and sometimes it's fucked up, and sometimes Jenny loses her temper. Cara Noble, Cara Noble. Where, where, where? <laughs> so, uh, well, I, what I've got coming up? Um, I've got I have my first commission to do a mosaic. And it's a bird bath, so oh, it's very complicated. So I've got that to look forward to. But I thought I'd just mention, I think I might have said it before, but um, there's a, um, an organization in the UK, it's called Human Rights, W-R-I-T-E-S. And it's in England. And that you are assigned a death row prisoner to write to. Oh. Um, I, ha I, have, I have my own. Um, but no, it's a fantastic idea because these many of these people that not, that not necessarily... Is still in prison, but on death row, they're not, they're not going anywhere and they have nobody. So it's fantastic. It's called humanrights.co.uk. Thank you, Cara. And Cheryl Murphy. You guys, uh, you guys can check out my upcoming events on my website, mediumcheryl.com. I'm always doing online something now on Zoom. So just check out my upcoming events. Thank you. And Durga. Well, I'm still uh, wanting everybody to experience Black Floyd, the album that I released with my sister Lorelai. It's got uh, cover songs of Pink Floyd songs sung from the perspective of Black women, as well as some originals. Um, so there, and also I'm available to do sessions. Go to Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R dot -R com and book me to sing on your song. That's great. Very I just nice. love it. Awesome. Carla Collins. Oh, you know, I'm just the rodeo clown. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I need some new stalkers. Mine had really become boring during the pandemic. <laughs> so uh, I, I like you to actually find me in person. You know, my adage is we've got to get our acts together as humans because obviously the aliens are here. And uh, when you when you see one, just say no, no, no. Take us to your leader, because um, honestly, I really think that some ass play or anal probing is worth the higher intelligence. But um, that's, that's my. Advice. I'm gonna but, hold you to that. Yes. Well, I, you know what? The, you I told you already about my podcast, but comedicmeditation.com. If uh, if that if that blows your skirt up. And I will blow your skirt up. That's also something I'm doing. <laughs> That's extra if you're wearing uh, shoes and Jenny. I, mean, I want my skirt blown up. Carla, when are you coming back to LA? Uh, pro uh, probably in May. Okay. May well, I mean, like I said, and I'll repeat this to Nicole, um, I want you guys back on. I, I hope, I would love for you to just let me know when you're available because I do miss you. And um, I'm so happy that, so nice to see you guys and to see where you are. And um, I will end this uh this uh podcast i'm like i'm i'm i had my first photo shoot today like a real photo shoot i've been on my feet since six o'clock in the morning 
Mm. I have done this for 32 years and I feel like I'm 82 years old. I need to oh. soak in an Epsom salt. And <laughs> I was so tired when I walked in the house and go, oh shit, I have to do my podcast. And I just want to say thank you guys for invigorating me. Um, oh. But Nicole, please tell us again where <laughs> what you need us to do. Could you please, if you have any heart in you, go to iTunes, look up The Third Strike, and order it as a pre-sale because it's going to be released by Gravitas Ventures on March 16th. But if you order it as a pre-sale on iTunes, you can look it up. It's super easy. The third strike. Uh, if we get 250 sales, it will land on their landing page and it will help us. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it's really important. And I, I could only ask you guys to please just pass it on tell everybody about it because it, it's not just about me as a filmmaker. It actually is about something really important. And like Nicole, do you it. have a website or uh, any, it's called, anything? It's called, it's called If So Films. And by the way, do you know why I called my production company If, if So Films? Mm -mm. I figure shit out. <laughs> <laughs> I-F-S-O Films. <laughs> <laughs> So March 16th is my mother's birthday, by the way. Oh, oh cool. So, Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Chris. All you have to do is just look up the third strike and just please pre-order. Could you ask everybody? Because my angel got me 100 pre-sales today. Nice. We need 200 more. Yeah. Wonderful. Like, like my angel has lit, like she, she's kicking ass. I mean, you tell... You tell an attorney like my angel Cody, could you help us like get pre sales? That bitch is making it happen. So I'm just, <laughs> if anybody else can help us, we just need pre sales. And, and, and if we get the pre sales, then we get the landing page. And We're doing it right now. It's easy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Well, everyone, thank you again. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Christian. Again, Between the Shoots podcast, the first and third Friday of every month. The next show is March 5th. And we have um, film producer, actress, life coach, um, Ellie Wallace on, and um, she'll bring you up to date with her projects and stuff. I think she possibly may have a venture with Nicole Kahn. Um, but thank you again. Follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat. Please follow the Facebook page, Between the Sheets Podcast. These shows will go up on my YouTube, YouTube page, Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno, and the audio portion will be everywhere. Also, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please share this. Please do watch parties. You know, we are, I'm still here. I'm still here because you people keep watching and um, it's a labor of love. And for everybody on here, it's a labor of love. I so, love you, Dan. I, love I love you, Nicole. I love you, Cheryl. I love you, Carla. I love you, Carla. I love, I love you, Sarah. I love you, Jenny. I love everybody. And um, and it's really funny because there's a friend of mine who, who says to me when I say, I love you, and we're not in a romantic relationship. And she tells me that it doesn't mean anything, that I say, I love you to so much to so many people, even to strangers. Mm. And she tells me that it's, it's meaningless to her. It's just like another word. And I don't fucking care because I do love, I come from love and I love everybody. And, um, and it doesn't have to be someone I know. Um, but I think, as I said before, if we all move forward in life and just spread a little bit of love and a little bit of meditation, and a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of song and a little bit of insight and a little bit of comedy and a little bit of mosaic. Um, I think um, I think we're all doing a wonderful thing in this world, even though it's slowly, but it's not about the outcome. It's about that we're taking the first step. Mm -hmm. So I applaud each and every one of you here on this show for taking that first step in whatever floats your boat. I thank everyone out there. You know, don't be a sheep, be a wolf. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and good night, everyone. And as I always sign off, namaste. Have a good namaste. night, everybody. Bye. 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 Namaste. namaste.